Welcome to the Quiet Warrior Show, where we help top leaders find their pathway to incredible success and a lifetime of happiness. Here is your host, Tom Dutta, the Quiet Warrior. All right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to the Quiet Warrior Show. My name is Tom Dutta, and hey, we're live streaming today, and I have a guest on named Nate Palmer. You can see him there. We are live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Man, this is next generation podcasting where you get to peek into the studio and watch us bloopers and all. You know, it's January 2022, and we've just come out of uh, a holiday season. Many of us are thinking about refocusing, and I'm a big uh, ad, a fan of mind, body, and soul uh, total package. And so when my guest came across my screen, I went, wow, that, that looks like a pretty cool topic. And then I saw the million dollar body method and I went, okay, I'm a little bit skeptical, but man, I, I got into our guest's book and it blew my mind. There's something very different about this. Before I introduce and tell you a bit about him and then we'll get rocking, I want to just uh, read you something from uh, Nate Palmer's book, The Million Dollar Body Method. Uh, this is, I've read the book. I'm going to talk about that. He says, the single greatest problem for someone who wants to lose weight and get fit is that there are too many coaches and trainers promoting plans and products that are great for helping you drop some weight from your wallet, but not much else. These gurus are either intent on increasing their own bottom line in an industry that's set out for its biggest year ever, the supplement industry was worth $42 billion in 19, or they're coming from a completely unrealistic gym fantasy land where everyone has time to meal prep daily, eat six times per day, do two hour workouts before their afternoon nap. Your weight loss results do not matter. When I read that, I went, holy crap, I got to read this book. And finally, the BS filter went down. And I went, this is real. This is a man who comes from that industry who has challenged the very industry and the paradigms he learned. And that's why everybody, you need to get his book and read it and listen to this podcast, because we're going to flip some things upside down and bust through some myths. Uh, welcome to the Quiet Worry Show, Nate. Thanks, Tom. I'm so pumped to be here. And thanks for reading that. I, I really appreciate that you got a chance to check it out. Yeah, it's the magic of reading with the, the this Kindle reader. You get the highlight. And, you know, I'm not kidding here. I show everybody authenticity. I've got probably 10 pages of printout notes from your book. Uh, it really is uh, is something we're going to dig into. I want to tell everybody about the greatness behind you, Nate. Nate just a quick uh, bio here. Everybody, Nate is a fitness and nutrition expert, coach, speaker, writer, who believes that being in incredible shape gives a massive advantage in business, focus, and relationships. He also happens to be a dad, husband, a number one best-selling author of The Million Dollar Body Method and Passport Fitness. He helps business owners and entrepreneurs improve their physique, finances, and family time using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. Now, that's what I said, Nate. What caught my attention here is that this is not just talking about nutrition, but you talk about a whole lot of other things, in particular when you talk about business people. I think you're, get, you're getting a, a huge audience out there. So let's get into the story. I always I said to you when I invited you, tell me, you know, tell me your gut punch. Tell me maybe some adversity that maybe shifted your thinking and put you on a path to get where you are. And you told me a little story in an email about something that happened. It involved uh, 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 hiding under a bed. Tell us that story because it's in the book too. Yeah, thank you, for, uh, thank you so much for asking. And and also, like, I feel like when you read that bio, it kind of puts this like, you know, like in a bio, you're kind of bragging a little bit. Like, I'm also just like a guy who, you know, enjoys talking to people and putting out that kind of like sharing what I've learned about nutrition and stuff like that. So I don't want to come across like I'm yeah, putting myself he, as this guru. He, yeah, he's he's just a guy. The guy has a body like that. Oh, let's take a look at another one. There, there's just a really cool average guy. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, he's looking, he's looking like an average guy. Absolutely. <laughs> looking <laughs> okay, like sure. I can crush a couple IPAs in that picture. <laughs> but thanks. Yeah, thank you for asking. So my journey with fitness did not kick off in a lot of, in the way that a lot of people's do, where they're captain of the football team or like a track star or something like that, and they got into fitness because they're athletic already. I got into fitness because I was afraid. And I think a lot of people have this reaction, but maybe from a different perspective than I did. So when I was growing up, I was always really skinny. I was a small kid. I remember a girl being like, hey, show us your arms. And I was like, cool, right? You look at my biceps. And she's like, I told you Christy's arm is bigger than his. And I was like, oh, 
I'll just go kill myself because I'm 11 and that's the worst thing I've ever heard. So um, like fast forward like a couple of years, I mean, I think I'm in eighth grade. My mom had just taken my two sisters who are younger than me to school and I'm at home by myself, kind of getting ready, going, uh, waiting for the bus. Um, and I hear a knock on the door and someone comes up and I don't recognize him. So I don't open the door. Anyways, he comes around the back and he breaks a window in my house. And I was like, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm young, but I know that's not probably a good sign, but they're like, I was such a scared person that I was yeah. honestly as scared of like getting in trouble from calling the police or having to call my mom that I didn't even do anything. So I was like, well, let me grab a steak knife out of the knife block go hide under my bed. I'm like 12 years old. Right. And I lock the door. It's like little rinky dink, like, boop, like push button lock. Goodness. And I just <laughs> sit there by myself. Wow. And you were, you were, how, how old were you? I think I was 12. Wow. Seven. Well, first of all, man, I want to honor that part of your story. Uh, we talk about that. The, the adversity is really the points we learn from. And I, I, I don't bring people on the show who have egos and just talk about how great they are. That's why I love you. And what you said about, you know, my bio makes me sound like this, but I'm just an average guy, but dude, let's step into our greatness. You're more than average. And I want, can I share a little story with you? Because you triggered Please. something. I was going to read that part of the notes I had about the story, but you told it well. I mean, man, there he is under his bed with a steak knife, locked his door because there's an intruder in his house and you don't know what's out there at age 12. I've done 210 episodes on my show over four years. I've lived a full life and I'm a big fan of trying to figure out what motivated me to get up and do what I do. Nobody has ever come on my show and told a story where I were like that, where I go, that's my story. So here goes. When I was about your age, my brother and I, we lived uh, in a neighborhood locally. Uh, my father was a military commanding officer. He was out Thursday nights at cadets. Uh, and my mom was asleep. The whole family was asleep. Uh, I would go up to go to the bathroom, walk down a hallway from my room to the bathroom, which wasn't far. And there was a flashlight shining at me. A black tall figure uh i swear there was a, a a mask or a cap on and a shiny object which was a switchblade and i freaked out i didn't go to the bathroom i ran to my room and i didn't hit under the covers i didn't tell anybody probably for a year in fact i had nightmares what had happened is is that somebody had come into the house to the back and waited till we all went to sleep they hid in the backyard they came in and they slashed every carpet, every piece of furniture with the switchblade, destroyed our entire living room. And we didn't know until about a year later, my parents had these ceremonial knives on the on the uh, uh, the fireplace. These are Gurkha knives from the Gurkha tribes where they used to uh, use them to do ceremonies to, to, to kill an animal. They had removed one of the small knives and put their switchblade in that spot. And... What's amazing about your story, and thank you for letting me dominate for a minute, is as I was growing up, I was picked on as a kid. I was kind of I, I was kind of self-conscious. And then I spent most of my teenage years in a gym with a bunch of meatheads on, you know, taking all these supplements and things, trying to get big. But that's that dude is what drove me to never want to be in a position like that again. Uh, so Man, we're like brothers already in this. So I'm going to turn it back to you. And, and uh, let's get into the the book itself. Hold up that book so we can see it on the screen there. All right, I'm going to full screen you. Read, uh, tell us the title again. It's called The Million Dollar Body Method. But like before I talk about the book, though, I just want to say, like, Tom, that is crazy. And it's like, that's like psych a lot. Like, I mean, mine was was scary, right? A guy in my house and stuff like that. He took, took some jewelry, took a DVD player. It was the 90s. But for someone to come in there and just like, terrorize your house like i yeah like i completely understand that feeling of just like powerlessness and being like i don't ever want to let someone steal my autonomy again so like maybe if i have enough muscles like i'll be able to put like protect myself protect the people around me like do like that like when you're telling me that like i give me chills man i'm like emotional <laughs> right now i know and thank you and the the funny thing is they think it was somebody that was didn't like my dad because my dad was pretty tough as a commander that somebody knew Thursday night, he's not here. But uh, but anyway, you got past that chapter of my story. That book itself, everybody here, I want to make a comment here that as authors, we are we get known by people who read our books. So I'd like you to get Nate's book. I want you to read it. I want you to go online and post a review on Amazon, goodreads.com. That's how this man is going to get his, his, his knowledge out there. And uh, 
so I want to dive into this for a minute. Uh, tell us, this book has something called, se there's seven things in it and this whole method. And then I wrote down something on my paper here, the glycogen priming method is the key to the to that program. Just get us into that. Tell us, what is it? So I really like to talk about things in terms of like, how, how do we utilize the, like these like activities, these habits, but think about them in a way that's actually going to benefit our future. And I think as business people, as entrepreneurs, we understand the concept of investing. We understand, understand investing in the stock market. We understand investing in our business. We understand investing in ourselves. But I really think that at the baseline of any successful person who's got, who's well-rounded, you know, body, mind, and spirit, the nutrition and the fitness is a, is a cornerstone. It creates amazing habits. It it like allows you to build upon it. They say the man with his health has a thousand dreams. The man without only has one. And I firmly believe that. So I call the the seven critical habits that I think are really important. I call them the seven daily investments, because without a doubt, if you did these seven things for the rest of your life and you didn't worry about fad diets or running marathons or eating a lot of kale, you would be incredibly successful more than like ninety nine percent of the rest of the people in the world. So I can go into those what those seven things are if that's all right. Yeah, uh, the seven daily investments that also makes this book and this method different because you talk about an investment, which I love. I also want to just say one more thing before you get into the methods or the investments that the, the I as a as a CEO, a high uh, high level executive myself, dude, I I, I could never find time in all the coaching and things I've ever had. I could never find time to do the meal preps, do the do the workouts, and in fact, most of my buddies in the community of business. They're, they're very busy people. Uh, so take us into the, the seven investments. Just tell us snippets of each. Absolutely. And I love, I, I think that you're not alone in that. Like most people don't have time to do these like huge radical morning routines and meal prep and all this stuff. And I don't think you need to. And I think that like, that's a lie that's been sold to us over and over and over again until we just believe that it's true. So the seven daily investments are the kind of the things I've distilled down into like their most effective doses. So I have a morning routine in there but like I've got a one-year-old at home and a three-year-old. So rather like when I was, when I was, you know, single or married, just married or whatever, I would do 20 <laughs> minute, 60 minute morning routines. It didn't matter. No one cared. Now I don't have that luxury. So I wanted to distill this down to what's something you can do in 90 seconds. That's going to get you most of the benefit, the highest return on your investment. And so I, I took that into two things. Number one, drink 32 ounces of water. First thing, when you wake up, rehydrate your body, start helping your body, start burning fat. You're going to get more energy than drinking a pot of coffee. The second thing of the morning routine is 60 seconds of explosive exercise, jumping jacks, jump rope, jumping on a trampoline, shadow boxing, whatever that looks like. But getting your body moving is going to start getting you active and shift you from that kind of that sleepy like zone we're in when we wake up to what's called sympathetic nervous system dominance, which means that you're in that, I don't like to say fight or flight because there's like not very many cheetahs yeah. chasing us on a regular basis, but like shake and bake, you know, you're like ready to go. You're ready <laughs> to get after it for the day. And this is in the first 30 minutes from what I recall. Yeah, just get it like get it done first thing. Like I I like roll out of bed, put on my clothes, drink my water, do my jumping jacks, and like that. And I then I'll drink the second glass of water. I'll do like two sixteens. That's kind of the the way it goes. And I feel really good. And it didn't take me any time at all, which is perfect yeah. for exactly what we need. That's awesome. And so uh, you get into the uh, the the second daily investment. Tell us about that. Yeah. So what's great about these is there's three of the daily investments are literally breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's really just four extra things. Okay. So the, the breakfast is have, have a high protein, high fat breakfast. Most of the time I'm having people do a, a protein shake in that way. Just makes it really easy. Again, three minutes or less, you're out the door. You've already engineered your nutrition to match your goals. So you're going to be feeling good. You're going to be telling your body to burn fat. And then by going really low carb in the morning, we, uh, we have subscribed to what I think of as like the last in first out or LIFO model of, of like fat loss. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of times, like when you're eating carbohydrates all the time, it'd be like working at a grocery store, you're working at Albertsons or something like that. I don't know if you have Albertsons up in Vancouver, but um, you put the milk in, right. And then like someone takes the milk out and then someone, and then as a staff person, you come and put the milk back in the front. Okay. So that's what it's like to eat carbs where they're only taking out that one, that one thing yeah. over and over again. And all this milk in the back is just sitting there getting older. Okay. What we want to do is want to like pull it out and then come around back and put it back in there. So that way it's always, we're always burning the oldest stuff first. So by giving our body low carbs in the morning, we can teach our bodies to burn stored fat or for energy. So it's just like, do you know how your body works and can you manipulate it? Can you turn that knob? Can you pull that lever? Cause that's what it's all about. Like this whole, like six meals per day, meal prep, tilapia and broccoli, that's blunt force trauma. 
and it can work, but only for a certain, a certain amount of time. And you're going to hate every minute of it. I'd rather you eat tacos <laughs> and have a good time. Yeah. You know, in my, in my lifetime, there's been many recommendations in this eat every four hours and small meals and whatnot. It's very complicated. Something you said about the, the breakfast when I heard uh, high fat, I, you know, I, I'm pretty educated now from your program, but for a lot of people, when they hear that, they go, what? Because, uh, you know, the nutrition uh, supplement market talks about protein shakes, protein shakes. And uh, there, I've been working through a concussion or a brain injury for a few years from a fall in a bathtub. And I've kind of realized there's healthy fats and there's unhealthy fats. So just comment about that before people think they should start going out and eating all kinds of fat. Yeah. So we're not, we're not trying to just like have like, you know, lard or a bunch of like trans fats <laughs> or saturated fats. Well, apparently having... in parts of the world they do. And in London, there's something called drippings. It's actually fat, actual fat. <laughs> it, I'm, seriously, I'm a home chef, actual fat that comes out almost looks like bacon and they layer it on toast. <laughs> apparently that's a delicacy. That doesn't surprise me. That's from the UK, you know, yeah. like for, for spending so much of their nation's history, like looking for spices, they don't use any of it in their cooking. Right. Huh? <laughs> anyway, sorry, get back into that again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, fats. so healthy fats, we want to make sure that we're having like, like we want to have a lot of omega three fatty acids and a limit, a lot of the omega six fatty acids, you know? So like we think about fish oil, you think about healthy fats from like salmon. And I think to a certain extent, like you know, peanut butter, natural peanut butter, almond butter, avocados, those can have some, like, those are mostly monounsaturated fats. Some of them are saturated fats, but they're, but they're healthier. Avocados are saturated fat. Coconut oils are saturated fat, but those are, those are going to be good for you. They're all going to promote anti-inflammation. And then what I love about eating fat is that it can give you this really great calm energy all day. Yeah. That's not going to like spike your blood sugar. It's going to level you out. And like, until you really get a feel for your body and what your hormones are up to, what your energy is like, and then what your cravings are like, those are two of the biggest like tells. Like once you start understanding that you're going to tell a massive difference and you'd be like, wow, I was living with such low energy before that. I didn't even realize it, but that fat is a great, what I call low impact fuel. So if you're podcasting, if you're reading, if you're writing, you're presenting, you're writing emails, whatever that looks like for your life and business. That's the perfect fuel. If you're going out and you're digging big holes, you're building houses, you need some carbs. Most of yeah. us, that's not that's not the case. Yeah. Now, what about there's people out there who say, oh, I'm too busy and I skip breakfast or there's many because I, mean, I think North America, Canada might be a bit different, but uh, you know, there's a epidemic of obesity and whatnot in parts of the world, United States, for sure. I travel down the US and dude, there's something that I got to share with you here, get off my chest. I go to my Starbucks up here. Well, I don't go to Starbucks now that I know how to keep my body, but I uh, there's something called plate size. And there's a very big difference between the plate size in the US and up here. So when I go to Starbucks here, the items that are on display and I go to the US, they're bigger. And play, I had a friend, uh, he was a chief operating officer from a company that I worked for. I, I was in Canada and he was sort of a dotted line uh, boss I had. And I took him out for dinner up here in Canada and he looked at the plate and he said, what's this? Where's all the food? So <laughs> when do we have to stop having appetizers? Yeah. So I think quantity comes in, but there are some people who will go for high carbs and sugar and some will skip breakfast. Uh, is that a, is that a, a, a major disaster? The carbs and sugar in the morning, I would consider that a major disaster. And the reason for that is that it sets your, your day off like in the wrong, sh like if you ever woken up late, Tom, and you have a yep. meeting at like eight o'clock and you're supposed to be up by seven and then you're all the way, like you sleep until yep. seven 40 and you're yep. rushing. It's hard to come back from that. Isn't it all yeah. day long? You're like, uh, right? exactly. so that's what happening. A high sugar, high carbohydrate breakfast does for us. Cause if like, if, if what we need is this nice, steady, like all day, slow release energy from that we get from fats having high carb in the morning, even if it's like a banana or like a whole grain bagel or something, it's like, boom, blood sugar goes way up. And then a lot of times the, like our blood sugar goes up and then our insulin goes up to meet it, but we go a little beyond what we need. So then the blood sugar goes down, the insulin's taking care of it. But we still have this insulin just hanging out in our system. And what yeah. that does, it sends a signal from our brain. It's, it's called ghrelin. It's a hormone just naturally releases. And it's like, Hey, we have some insulin left over. We need some sugar. And so rather than having like six blueberries, you know, we're like, well, let me just have half a donut at 10 30 right. <laughs> Then that blood sugar goes up, insulin goes up and then back down. So we're all day long. We're just chasing these num these like the blood sugar and insulin around. And we're never getting to the point where just, we're like, we're smooth. We have that great energy. Like, you know, you've had those days when you're in flow state. Absolutely.
And that's what we like. We can engineer that, but never if we're going to have, if you're going to have a, a big high carb meal, you'll never get yeah. that. Even if you are extremely insulin sensitive and your body, like you're really lean, your body processes carbs. It's just never going to give you the, like that smooth energy that high fat, high protein can give you. Yeah. There was a part in the book. Uh, I can't remember which page in my notes here, but uh, you, you don't have to go into the detail. People can get the book, but you talked about, there was a list of uh, diseases or ailments uh, uh, and it talked about, you just said it, something about insulin uh, resistance what, what, yeah. resistance. And uh, one of the items on the list there, PCOS, and I, I know someone who's, who deals with that. So there's everybody, there's reasons to get this book and take a look, because I think what you're doing is you're giving us some preventive uh, strategies in here, because I believe that, you know, all diseases, you know, happens after, you know, the diet. It's what is what we put into our bodies and how we live our lifestyle. Let's uh, look at something here. When I, I just had a thought here, my brain's going on a journey. There's Nate watching his energy going up. He's amazed. Look at that. <laughs> uh, Nate, hold that book. Hold that book up again and tell us the title. Million Dollar Everybody, Body Method, The Entrepreneur's yeah, here, Diet for Superhuman Focus and Rapid Fat Loss. We're here today with Nate. Palmer, the, the author of this number one best-selling book, The Million Dollar Body Method. And uh, Nate, would you join me in watching a little video for a minute? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do this. I'm just going to put it on the screen here. And uh, it's about a minute, and then we'll, we'll get you to just talk about it. Stand by. Do for my family and my kids. Can you help me? And I said, okay, let's start off with a simple framework that's going to allow you to get the results that you want at home with your family, and then we'll start building on top of this to get better results physically, we'll add in training, et cetera. Fast forward two months, I reach out and I'm like, hey, how is everything going? And he goes, dude, it's amazing. My energy is never better. I do not have to crash on the, on the couch, watch ESPN for 30 minutes before I can have a great time with my kids in the evening. It's like, that's fantastic, man. I'm so glad to hear that. And he goes, yeah, by the way, wow. in this last two months, I've lost 22 pounds without training, without doing a whole lot of anything else. He was able to lose 22 pounds by just adhering to the simple framework that puts you in the driver's seat of your energy and of your fat loss. That is what the million dollar body is about. It is about leveling up. It is about becoming greater. It's about becoming more. We are the movers. We are the doers. We are the action takers. And to be all of that, to have everything that you want in life, we need to prioritize a health and fitness framework that gives you everything that you need. So jump in with us, check out the workouts, check out the podcast, check out the nutrition, check out the million dollar body method book on Amazon, whatever you do, I'd encourage you to dig a little bit deeper and see what it is that makes the million dollar body method so special and how you can start utilizing it today to get the results that you deserve. Whew. Boy, I tell you, uh, that certainly gets my brain going and thinking, Tell us about that. Watching it back again, first of all, what's the impact of watching yourself like that? And uh, some pretty pretty strong comments in there. Everybody, by the way, you can find that on YouTube, and we'll get from Nate at the end his website where you can find all his stuff. Talk about that video for a minute. Well, first, I'm like, man, I'm glad my look doesn't change a whole lot. With these <laughs> things. <laughs> but um, I love that story, and that's kind of the that was like the, the client I was speaking about. There was kind of the like the starting point, the linchpin of the Million Dollar Body program back in 20, 2018. Oh. And I've been doing online coaching since 2015. I was one of the first people kind of in that game. But basically, what I was doing was shipping off Excel documents with workouts on them. I love working out. I love training. Like it comes from like, you know, like building strength and building muscle. And yeah. I saw how that impacted myself. Like you're kind of going from running from fear toward running towards something bigger. But what I found is that most people were not getting the results they wanted to they because they couldn't adhere long-term to a training program for some reason. And the majority of the time is that they weren't seeing enough results physically to keep them motivated and on point. So in 2018, I, I keep saying 20,000, I don't know. Words are hard. <laughs> 2018, I was working with a client. He's like, I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to meal prep. I'm going to eat out five days per week. And I don't even care about losing weight. My energy is just so horrible. You need to help me with it. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and put together a plan. It was all about using your body's natural mechanisms to create more energy. And so when he came to me and said, oh my gosh, the energy is insane, but also I'm losing fat at a faster rate than I've ever been able to before. I was like, this is, this is more important than than fat loss. Like this is bigger than that. 
like you said, it's preventative for disease. It's learning how your body functions. It's showing up with a ton of energy. But the thing that kind of like, you know, bums me out a little bit, Tom, is that like, I talk about fat loss and belly fat and six packs and 10% body fat and stuff like that all the time, because that's the sexy thing that sells. Yeah. I would love to talk about energy and building muscle and all these things, but those things are just a little bit more relegated to like a niche, a niche market of people who like, who care about that. So in order to like talk more to, to more people, I have to like kind of promote that, like that sexy, like sell the sizzle. Right. And then I try yeah. to deliver the steak. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, well, first of all, I think all of us would like to have a body that is sculpted, uh, you know, like, like that picture we saw there, or particularly even like what you've done. I assume you never looked that way throughout your life. And that that's a testament to why your program works, because you have, uh, you live and walk the talk. One, one of the things I want to just ask you about was, uh, you know, this whole uh, part about uh, weight loss, there's a lot of junk out there pills and things that are just crap and it's like rapid loss. Um, I had a scientist, a, a, a muscle, specialized in muscle um, understanding protein and things like that, saying that there's a, it, losing he healthy weight loss. There's one thing, healthy weight loss. So losing too much weight too fast, losing muscle mass. So how in your program, I, I know the program from the book, people will read it, but how in your program do you balance that? Uh, to make sure there is a focus on, you know, the whole equation. Yeah. Good question. And I think of it in phases because in phase one, like if we just take it, like there's, there's kind of these two schools of thoughts. Number one is like food is just fuel and people who, who, you know, like kind of had that consideration don't yeah. take into account that food is, is culture. Food is love, food is family, you know, like, and there's like a huge, like sharing component to food. And if you just are like food is food, food is fuel. And you never really understand the other level. And then on the other side, you have people who are like, oh yeah, like you just need to like do it super sustainably and super slow. But what ends up happening is that like people lose interest and get, and get unmotivated. So I think there's a happy medium. And I yeah. think that is phase one. Okay. So if you're just starting something out, I want you to see a big win. I want you to get a victory here. So like I, in the first month, the first four weeks, when people are working with me, I have something that's a little bit more strict. You know, so we've seen people lose from eight pounds in a, in a month. All I saw someone lose 22 pounds in a single month. He was on the heavier side, but still like yeah. that was incredible progress. And it was amazing because he wasn't even working out that much. He was just following along with the nutrition and I don't want him to lose 22 pounds every month. That would be detrimental, but the amount of excitement and motivation he had leaving that month carried him through the rest of the year. So his whole transformation, he lost like 80 pounds. It was incredible. But yeah, it started a, off with that, like that spark, that like that yeah. feeling of like, I'm doing it, I'm being successful for the first time. Yeah, that's amazing. We're going to get into, I think, the fifth investment, uh, the last or final deposit in, in, in a minute. Uh, everybody, we're talking to Nate Palmer, the author of The Million Dollar Body Method. And I, I want to honor you first. Yeah, there's the book there. I want to honor you first of all, man. That what what I, I didn't realize, but you know, if you heard Nate say a minute ago, everyone, that he... Coach does a lot of coaching on, online uh, and uh, sending out, you know, docu PDFs about exercise routines. That's how he sort of developed himself. Dude, in a, in a COVID-19 world, digitizing your business, moving online, that's fantastic. I have, uh, uh, I did a TED talk in 2020 um, uh, after my injury, my concussion. And uh, there's a fellow I just found him, I knew him who, I said, oh, you got to train me for three months so I can get on stage because I was really in bad shape. And he, when we hit COVID, he, his business died. He hadn't done, put together any online. Uh, so way to go. I think this is part of the future, everybody, where you can get Nate uh, online. You know, it doesn't matter where you are. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, and uh, you can be my coach. I think that's just awesome, man. It's a great example to the industry. Uh, let's talk about the... Um, uh, the fifth deposit, and then I want to talk about the book again. Fifth deposit, or the final deposit, sorry. Uh, tell us about that. Okay, so this one is one that a lot of people sleep on, I think, because they're like, oh, yeah, I'll write down. Because the final deposit is basically take stuff out of your brain and put it onto a sheet of paper after you finish work for the day or before you go to sleep. And I think a lot of times we're like, yeah, 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 sounds all like all well and good, but I think this one thing can help you clarify so much of what you're doing and it enables you to have the energy for your for your family, for your tribe after you finish out 
like your work day. So here's how I do mine. I call it the, fi the final deposit. And then on one side, I write down, what am I proud of for the day? What did I yeah. like? What did I do today that I think is, is important because as entrepreneurs, like leaders and stuff, we often like, don't look at our successes or we think we just poo poo them. We're like, Oh yeah, yeah. Onto the next, onto the next. And then I take stuff like, Oh, what is the important thing that I need to do? That's going to allow me to move the needle. And I call that win the day. Yeah. So I write those things down and then I shut everything down. I unplug my computer and I'm done for the day. And, I, and that has been such an important thing for me, especially as my kids are getting a little bit older, because I can be on my phone all the time being like, oh yeah, honey, I'm just checking Instagram messages one more time. Oh, I just know how to respond to this email. And that's not how I want my daughter to grow up thinking that my cell phone is more important than her. So this final deposit so great for clarifying my thoughts on what I need to do tomorrow to be very successful. And also, and also just like, like leveling, like just leveling the playing field and allowing me to shut off and shut down, which is critical for our, for us as entrepreneurs and leaders. Yeah. I like that. And the, there's more, more than that in the book, everybody, uh, the, 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 uh, fifth investment final deposit. I I've, I'm a big advocate of that, man. And especially knowing a lot of leaders in business, they talk the talk, but they don't, you know, to-do list you talk about on the job, but this first hour of the day or last hour of the day, uh, almost everybody I know who's become healthy and successful have some type of a routine. And when I, I want to come back to my injury, I fell in a bathtub and had a brain injury and it's three years now I'm still recovering. I've got, uh, uh, broken double or double vision and eye issues that I'm still working on. And I'm, I'm in a advanced program at a neuroplasticity clinic. I have to literally reteach myself to think and speed up my brain and slipped into depression pretty quickly. Uh, and had su my first suicidal thoughts. That's what the, I talked about in the talk I did, but I, I, they sent me to cognitive behavioral therapy for a year and I don't want to get deep into this, but I started learning about, uh, uh, neuromodulators, things, these words, dopamine and serotonin and uh, norepinephrine, which I'd heard before. But when I started connecting all the dots, I started realizing, and what you said blew my mind, it's so good, that this is a total picture. So for example, I'm in a high stress job as a business leader and uh, the board's not happy. I'm traveling, I'm away from my family and my kids. And uh, dopamine, what I understand is Dopamine is released not for the reward, but in anticipation of reward. So there I am. And what am I doing when I'm traveling? I'm taking in sugar. I'm drinking wine and alcohol to create this flow uh, to make me feel better. If I do what you said, if I do things like separating from my thoughts, writing my final deposit, doing things and start understanding how I can use, use you know, uh, my brain, uh, and these techniques you're talking about to, for my mental health, it also impacts, tell me what you think, but it impacts how we eat. I can be on your program, but if I'm not managing my mental health, I don't give a crap. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fall off the wagon. Just tell me if I'm full of it or if there's something there. No, man, that's a hundred percent right. And again, like these are the things that I think are so intricate and so interesting, but you know, we got to talk all about six packs and abs, right? <laughs> because when you when you get to the end of your day and you have all the, yeah six pack you have all these, just, uh, just to just to rub it in <laughs> and you have all these thoughts going through your head like you end up with what we they call decision fatigue and for a long time I was like decision fatigue that's fake but it's yeah. not it's a real thing it's been studied so they show that like if you have a like a cookie out on the countertop in the beginning of the day you're ninety percent not going to touch that at the end of the day. There's like an 88% chance you're going to be like, yep, I deserve this. So when you're able to de-stress and declutter your mind, you're actually doing yourself a favor in terms of your fitness, your nutrition, and your mental health as well. Because if you're if you're cluttered, if you're frustrated, it's so easy for us to reach for something comforting. And for most of us, that can be alcohol and that can be food. And that's like, those are the two bit, like most abused drugs in the US at least. So yeah. I'm sure it's yeah. probably the same across Canada as well. But it's so easy for us to be like, I'm frustrated, I'm stressed. And without even realizing it, we're in the fridge compromising our, our values again, you know, until the point where you're like, it's 9 p.m. And you're like, sure, I'll eat the heel of this bread and an old piece of cheese. And you just like, you're just so far down that road that there's no coming back because you just, you've never uh, had a clarity of mind to be able to like, <sighs> take that deep breath and like, and realize that it's all good. You're fine. Everything's going well. You just needed a little bit yeah. more clarity. 
That's why I like the pro the program we're talking about here, everybody, the million dollar body method. I like the fact that I think it's 28 days is the core of it. Uh, and then you, 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 you keep going with some stuff to maintain it, but I like the whole body, mind, soul, the whole package that, you know, you, you, here, here he is, Nate talking about not just physical, but you know, the mental health side, uh, all of that. Uh, there's two, uh, there's one other piece that I want to talk about before that. Let's talk about the book for a minute. So one more time, hold that up for us. We're sure giving you a commercial on that. There it is, everybody. You want to get it. You want to read it. Please do a review on it. Review means read it and go to Amazon or goodreads.com and post a review where you find the book. It's easy to do. That helps uh, his work get known. I, I've got something I want to share with you here. Uh, just stand by. All right, we're gonna put it up on the screen. So this is a, this is, there you have it, your international Canadian five-star review. I posted this January 1st <laughs> on Amazon and people can read it. I'll leave it in the show here and, and they can go onto Amazon. But uh, I, uh, I titled this, boom, he challenges his profession. And then I went through and I commented, this book blew my mind, Nate. So it's such a great book and uh, let's, uh, you know, I guess it's probably worth some fireworks. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> All right, let's take that. Tom, off thank the you screen. so much. That means that means a lot. Honest, like I know you've said that a couple times, but like really, as an independent author, like getting a review on on that book is like it, You're is fantastic. Awesome, man. Thank you. Awesome, man. There it is. There's proof. Uh, the proof of the pudding on the Amazon. Everybody, if you're listening to the podcast, we're showing images on Amazon and online. Please go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to it, where you can watch the video production, which will come out. You'll see everything, the crazy things we're doing. <laughs> All right, man. So excited for you about that. Uh, let's move to one that really is a confusing topic for me. And I've just, as I said to you, I've been doing some things to recover from a brain injury, but they gave me a podcast to listen to by a Stanford brain surgeon and the topic of fasting came up again and in your book you talk about 24-hour fasting so uh i like that whole concept but i think it's it's misunderstood so tell us if we were to do that what's the best way to do it and why so i've experimented with a lot of different types of fasting over the years and you mentioned one of them earlier just skipping breakfast and doing like the 16 8 intermittent fasting but what i found is that the 24 hour or longer the prolonged fast are better than the intermittent fasting for several reasons. Number one, a 24 hour fast is basically equivalent to three and a half 16 hour fasts. Number two, I found that with the 16 hour fast, when you eat lunch, that ends up being a larger than average meal for the day. So what we end up doing is you end up having a, like a bigger meal then, which kind of, which will raise your blood sugar levels and keep your energy low for the afternoon. So when you're trying to cross stuff off your to-do list, check those boxes, you can, you can put like two hours worth of work into four hours. And instead we want to do the opposite. We want to have so much focus and so much energy that we're doing four hours of work in two hours. So you can get home and do the things that really matter to you. So I, for that reason, I love the 24 hour fast, like just kind of outside of all those other things. The, the second reason the 24 hour fast is incredible is because it gives you this like insurance policy, this, like this safety net. So if you do have a couple of glasses of wine here or there, if you are going to eat a little dessert on, on like a, on a night, like once or twice, you're, it's not going to impact you as a way, the way that it would, if you were eating every single day. So it gives you that little bit of flexibility so that you don't have to like say no pizza ever again. I'll never eat tacos, I'm never having beer. Like, cause those <laughs> things are really limiting. And I think that when you say like, Hey, you can't have something like, what do we want to do? You know, if you're like me, it's like, I'm gonna double down. I'm gonna have 10 of those things. You just, you said, I can't, I'm having, yeah. I'm having more yeah. now. Yeah, that's amazing. So, uh, sorry, just my simple mind, and I do cognitively sometimes get lost in my thoughts right now, but the, when I hear 24 hours, that always tripped me up. So you explain it very well in the book. When I first started hearing that, I started freaking out going like, I don't, I'm not eating for 24 hours, and it was like three meals and two days, but just spell it out again if it's, so right now I'm waking up and it's breakfast, what's going to happen today with my meals? So basically how I would do it, like the simplest way to do this is eat breakfast, lunch, and then have a really healthy, nutrient dense dinner tonight. From there, don't eat breakfast or lunch tomorrow and have a, again, a healthy, nutrient dense dinner tomorrow. So you're spending 24 hours in a fasted state, but you're not okay. going to sleeps without eating. Gotcha. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I love pushing people into a 36 or a 40 hour fast. I think it's really challenging mentally. It's fantastic physically. It's great for fat loss, but to start off, just do the 24 
And then you can okay. always yeah. go from there. But I think that there's something very powerful for two reasons. Number one, you're doing an esteemable action. You're saying, I'm, I'm going to do this thing. And then you're accomplishing it. You can pat yourself on the back and your self-confidence is going to grow. So when someone's like, hey, can you do this thing? You're like, yeah, I can handle that. I'm good. You know, and that gives yeah. you that ability. The second thing is that like, when you, when you go through that, like that process and you get those hunger pangs and you start being like, you can kind of separate yourself from it. And you're like, you know what? I am stronger than these cravings. Yeah. Like I'm able to, to separate myself from like my feelings and my emotions around, around food. And it builds this mental strength and fortitude that is, that is remarkably different than the, what the culture preaches of eat six times per day. No, you can have snacks during meals. So like that way, when I'm like, Hey, don't snack. You're like, yeah, why would I? I'm good. And I think that <laughs> is an incredible mental transformation outside of the physical stuff that happens as well. Yeah. That's great advice. Uh, they also, I think about diabetes. My dad passed away a few years ago. Uh, he drank hard most of his life and he was 22 years dry with AA. So I think he beat himself up. So that's probably part of why he didn't live as long, but he had type two diabetes and uh, high blood pressure and all these things. And he was medicating for it. But I know my dad and a lot of people I know have diabetes and my doctor says, don't snack. Like a lot of people watch movies. We're in this digital age, right? Where we're isolated and out comes the popcorn and the Twizzlers and all this crap. But Tell us about snacking after you have your dinner. Probably not a good idea. Not not ideal. And I like I think if you're gonna snack after dinner, there's a couple of, like ways you can do it smartly. Smartly is that a word? I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, smartly, <laughs> I'm not smartly enough to know. <laughs> it is now. You just coined it. <laughs> um, but I think that like just snacking in general is a super detrimental, like diabetes, obesity causing um, issue. You know, that idea of like, you're, you're never giving your body a chance to rest and digest. And that's another thing about fasting is that when you're not eating, your body goes into a, a process called autophagy. Autophagy is a fancy word that means cleaning out old broken down cells. Okay. Wow. So it's like your body's natural detox. So rather than buying like all these like juice cleanses and skinny teas and detoxes that people are selling on Instagram, just let your body do it. Your body's incredibly smart and it loves you so much. So do like, do that from a natural perspective. But when you're eating all the time and you're snacking between meals at 10.30, at 3.30, yeah. at 9 p.m. after dinner, you're never giving your body a chance to actually understand what's going on. You're hearing a signal and you're like, I guess that means time to eat, but you're probably thirsty. You're probably bored. You probably haven't slept enough. And we never are able to, to understand or, or feel those things because we just mask it with a sandwich. We mask it with some chips, or popcorn, you know? So I think like... Yes, you can snack in the evening and still lose weight and still be healthy. There's no problems with that. But the problem comes when that's our crutch, that we rely yeah. on that. And yeah. we can't hear the signals that our body is really like shouting at us. Yeah. There's a whole nother element that's coming with COVID. A lot of people are forced to work at home. Uh, we won't have time to get into that here. But I think everybody from the early part of the interview, if you go back, it's a teaching moment about how Nate's program has you start your day. My wife has a home office. She works for one of the banks up here. And she basically went from standing and being a manager in the bank to sitting all day uh, with a headset. It's like a call center. So I bought her one of those rising desks. But one of the biggest fears is, and I can see that this whole shift in our lifestyles of not being as active uh, is having an impact. So, you know, I think your program and, and getting on something like this, you know, that's going to give us some hope and it's going to give us a, a path forward. I want to, I want to make a bold commitment here and, and actually publicly ask you to be, uh, hold me accountable. Uh, I have about four weeks to finish with my brain therapy program. I was telling you about, we can talk offline about that if you're interested, but I, I want to, I would want to do this program. And so we can, from afar, I've got the book, I've read it. Uh, so I'm going to put a stake in the ground and commit to you that I want to do the 28 days I'll tell you when we're going to start. You can use me as a guinea pig, video me, whatever you want. Uh, and uh, we'll get back together again once that's finished, man. And uh, because I know with, with what I'm trying to do, getting my health back to 100%, yeah, I need that. <laughs> Let's do it. I, mean, I, I, right. I love you planting the stake. That public accountability is clutch too, you know? Because yeah. now, now everyone just heard you say that, so you can't, you can't <laughs> not do it. <laughs> so I guess that means I have to release this, uh, this interview too. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Are my connections going? I, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Am yeah. I coming through? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, as we go to wrap up, I've got one more surprise for you. But uh, before we do that, hold up the book again and tell the, tell everybody if they want to get on this uh, program, uh, connect with you. How do how do they do that? So if you're looking to check out the book, it's on Amazon. You can go, you can check that out. Just type in Million Dollar Body Method. You can get the uh, ebook on there or hardcover if you're if you're interested. If you want to connect with me further, then add me on Instagram at Million Dollar Body Method or um, you can find, they have a, like a Facebook community called, um, <laughs> lose the gut, eat more tacos, never track your calories, <laughs> the, M, the MDB project. Um, and you can go there by going to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. We'll get you there. Um, and then yeah, shoot me an email if you want to, I'm around. I always All right. love to connect. Hey, fantastic. We'll put it in the show notes as well. And so at this point in the show, if those who follow me, you'll, you'll know that I honor you with four leadership words. I write these down on my notepad here. They're not scripted. So I'm going to read them out loud. The first one is Maven. Uh, in the book Outliers, a Maven is somebody when you think about a topic, you say, who do I go to? Well, uh, in terms of your body and, and getting uh, where you need to be, uh, this is the man. Number two is integrity. Uh, again, it goes back to the book. You challenge yourself and your industry, and I love that. Number three is resilient obviously. And number four is energy. I don't know. Are you, are you always like this? I mean, I want that energy, man. Just watch his back and it's like, okay, this, that's amazing to me. And the last thing is we're going to induct you with an award here. I don't know if you knew you were going to get this, but I'm just going to full screen me for a minute and hide you. Uh, so behind me there, Nate, is what's called a challenge coin. And you can see the front has a picture of uh, kind of looks like a guy I know. <laughs> and that's the purpose action life the show the back is actually uh the hero's journey narrative fully illustrated which is the thread uh the thread in my show is we're all connected by stories and as you probably heard up front everybody uh, nate told a story about something that happened to him in his early years and i connected to that story we're like were there. I had these hand painted and crafted. They're raised uh, letters are beautiful. And you'll be receiving this. These are challenge coins that started in World War II and they were used to commit community. And today they're used around the world. Uh, first responders, AA, every organization uh, that has these connects people together. There's only less than 50 a year that go out in a planet of 80 8 billion people. And really, I only give these out to people who come and are real, tell their authentic story, but they're doing something with their adversity and their learning to help people in their lives. And last, by receiving it, you commit to continuing with your purpose, continue to take that action and create the life you deserve, but also help people do the same. So welcome to the Quiet Warrior Tribe. We're across 17 countries now. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You have like blown my mind today, Tom. <laughs> yeah there it uh, is there it is yeah. we gotta have some we gotta have some fireworks you gotta have some fireworks yeah just make sure you keep that mind healthy man we need you so uh, so on that note i'm gonna just let you have the last word and then we're gonna wrap this up cool uh, so if i if i get a chance to talk i love hearing my own voice so it's perfect thank you <laughs> but the thing that i would like if anyone's listening right now that is kind of on the edge like well i could you know i'm, I'm thinking about it i'm trying to jump in here's the encouragement that i would have for you is that the amazing thing about starting a business, doing a side hustle, or working on your fitness and your health is that there's no talent required. And your victory, the 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 you're good, like the the uh, the chance of you winning at this is a hundred percent. Your victory is guaranteed. You cannot lose at this. You cannot lose. The only way to lose is to quit. So if you have 15 pizzas one night, if you drink three, 13 bottles of wine, it does not matter. Just take the next step because you can't lose if you don't quit. So if you're thinking about it, if you failed in the past before, if you don't feel like, ah, oh, there's nothing that really works for me and my body, it doesn't matter. Take that next step because you got this, you got this. And it's not just like, it's not just like be good to have, you know, like lose some weight or have a six pack, whatever else, but you owe it to yourself to show up big time for the people around you that, that, that really matter. Your family, your kids, your partner, your, the, like the tribe of people that you're leading in your business. Everyone else is going to be so impacted by your evolution and your up-leveling. So do this, not just for yourself, but for the people around you, the people that you love and that you want to take care of, because they, the way, when you continue to grow and build, you become the standard. You set the standard for those people around you and you cannot lose at this if you don't stop. Wow. That, that, that is a motivational 
clip it itself. Everybody come back to the show and re-listen to that. What a teaching moment. We have Nate Palmer, uh, the author of The Million Dollar Body Method and a man who lives and walks that. And uh, I want you to stand by while we wrap the show up. Nate, we'll talk for a minute offline. We'll have an after party. I think what we'll do is we'll take our shirts off. You'll see what you used to look like and I'll see what I'm going to look like. <laughs> Done deal. Here for it. All right. All right, everybody. Hey, listen, fi find uh, your true purpose and passion like you hear from Nate there and live the life that you deserve and desire. And when this episode is released as the video premiere in the podcast, check it out again and uh, get that book of Nate's. Thank you, Nate. Thank you for listening to The Quiet Warrior Show. Create is a motive-based leadership development firm. www.kreat.ca